Now what I want to do is show off some of the functions in the ctype.h part of the library, and then I want to write them myself. I want to demonstrate that we can write these functions ourselves, just that it's nice that they're offered to us as part of the language standard library. So what I have here is um, a, uh, the same style of loop we've already seen a few times, which uh, reads characters one by one until the user enters a hash symbol. And then for each character, it prints it out, and then we'll try out a few of these functions in ctype.h. These are not exhaustive. There actually are quite a few others, and there are some really interesting ones in there as well. Um, so uh, the first one is isAlpha, and isAlpha tests, is the character a letter? So is it lowercase or uppercase? Is upper? Is it an uppercase letter? So it has to be a letter, but also is it an uppercase letter? Is lower is sort of the opposite. Is it a lowercase letter? And then there's is space. And is space returns true if the character is any kind of white space. And that includes an actual space or a new line or a tab. And there are a few other weird characters that you could create on the keyboard somehow that are technically white space. There's some strange um, enhanced character encodings that give you weird other space characters. And the fact that we don't know what all of those spaces are, like myself, the average everyday programmer, might not know all of the different things that could count as a space. That's one reason it's great that the language provides me this function is space that asks the question for me. So we'll try running that. And just to get familiar with this output formatting, okay, so let's enter hello and then press a hash. Actually, hello space world. And then, I don't know, maybe some symbols. There's some garbage there. And then press the hash symbol. Let's take a look. Okay, so uh, I had it there. Um, there we go. H is a letter, is uppercase, not lowercase, not white space. E is a letter, not uppercase, is lowercase, not white space. We'll scroll down, take a look at that space character. Is white space, not a letter, not uppercase, not lowercase. And then there's W. Maybe you get the idea. And then down at the end, we've got these bits of punctuation. Not a letter, not uppercase, not lowercase, not white space. So we can use these functions to learn more about the text that we're working with. Uh, and as I mentioned in the previous video, it turns out that the library actually also has functions to uh, convert uppercase characters to lowercase and lowercase characters to uppercase, but those will be seen in some separate video. Uh, and I think they also show up in, 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 to a great extent in the labs. So what I have over here is a homegrown version of that. So suppose that I don't want to use ctype.h. We'll just get rid of that. Suppose I don't want to use ctype.h. And that's, a, that's stupid. I should use ctype.h. Um, but suppose I insist on doing everything myself. I want to reinvent the wheel. Because although we really should use the library if it's available, we shouldn't take it for granted. We shouldn't treat it like it's magic. We should know what it actually does. Can I write all of these functions myself. Is uppercase, is lowercase, is letter, and is space. Down here I have the same setup that I had before. Uh, it just calls the functions and then prints out whether or not the characters that I read qualify. Okay, so we'll start with is uppercase. Now we already saw the answer to this. This function is going to return one or zero, true or false. So we know that if uh, the character is between uppercase A and uppercase Z, if the character is less than or, sorry, greater than or equal to uppercase A and, there's my logical and, the character is uh, less than or equal to uppercase Z, then I return one. And I'll use curly brackets here. If you took a look at the notes, the extra notes part three of week three, you might remember that you don't actually need curly brackets if your if statement is only one line long. And then else return zero. All right. Uh, so I've got this. And if the character is between the uh, first uppercase letter and the last one, return one. Otherwise, it's not uppercase, return zero. I'm actually going to cannibalize this whole thing is lowercase because we're all smart people we know that is lowercase is pretty damn similar to is uppercase just with a different set of things lowercase a to lowercase z and i'm going to test that out but before i test it i better make sure these other functions that i haven't written yet do have a return value so i will just have them always return false so of course they're broken because i haven't written them yet but that shouldn't be too much of a surprise then we'll compile and run this it's called homemade c type functions All right, enter some characters, I'll enter hello, and then some, some punctuation and other things in a space. All right, so let's take a look. The character H, not a letter. Okay, well, we have to fix that. It is uppercase, it's not lowercase, that looks good. E is not uppercase, but is lowercase. And then we'll go down to something that isn't a letter at all. 
The character dot, okay, not uppercase, not lowercase. That looks good. And the character space, not uppercase, not lowercase. So that's great. But now I need to write the other functions. Is letter. So return one if the provided character is a letter. Now we have two ways of doing this. And in the interest of maybe giving you a nice hint for assignment three, I'm gonna try and do it the way that saves me the most effort. So it's true, I could manually check, okay, if it's a letter, it's either uppercase or lowercase. So check whether it's between lowercase a and lowercase z, or if it's between uppercase a and uppercase z. But maybe the big brain moment here is if I think, wait a minute, if it's a letter, it's either a lowercase letter or an uppercase letter. I have functions to test those things. And so I could just use my other functions to write this one. I could say if um, is uppercase, if the character is uppercase, there we go, then return one. If it's uppercase, it must be a letter. So we're good. Else if the character is lowercase, well then also return one, because if the character is lowercase, it must be a letter. But if we get all the way down here and it wasn't uppercase or lowercase, then we're out of luck. So I'm calling my other functions to help me write this one. That's a big deal. That's one of the reasons we like modularity so much, because if we write a few basic functions, we can then use them to write more complicated ones. So let's try this out. And actually, I want to rewrite it in a minute because there's another thing we could do. We could use our logical OR operator to make it even more streamlined. Okay, so hello, and then hello. We'll do hello world, and then some punctuation just like before, and then the hash symbol. All right, question mark, not a letter. Angle bracket, not a letter. Looking good so far. Angle bracket, still not a letter. Okay. Um, the character D is a letter, is lowercase. The character R is a letter, is lowercase, looking good. And then here's the character space, not a letter, not uppercase, not lowercase. We'll have to fix that whole white space thing when we get there. And then we've got uh, O is a letter and is lowercase, and then back up to H, which is a letter and is uppercase. So I was able to use my other functions to write is letter. But I want to condense this down. I, I'm actually going to start it again from scratch. I want to try one other thing. So when is it true that you have a letter? Well, if it's uppercase, or, there's my logical OR operator, if it's lowercase. So in this case, what I've done is I've combined both conditions into one expression. If is uppercase returns true, or if is lowercase returns true, then return true. Otherwise, return false. So we'll test that out when we test out the next part is white space. So in this case, the actual is space function is a bit complicated. There are a lot of other weird space characters that even I don't know about, but I know about three. The actual space, the one I get with my space bar, new line, which I get by pressing enter, and a tab, which there's a tab key. You should take a look. It's interesting. Um, so I'm going to test if the character is equal to any of those three. And here's another great opportunity to use my logical OR operator. But you should observe, you don't need it. You could actually get away with not using logical OR for this. But I think I'm going to do that. If the character is a space, or if the character is equal to uh, a tab, that's backslash T. We don't need that one very often. Or if the character is equal to backslash N. Then I want to return one. Otherwise, else return zero. So I'll save this. And it's worth considering that you don't even need an else here. You could just write return one, and then down below the if statement say return zero. Because if you ever get down below the if statement, it means that we didn't run in the inside of the if. Because if we got inside the if, we already returned. So you don't actually need an else in this case. If you want to add one, go right ahead. It's fine. If the code makes more sense to you with an else, then add one. But you should get used to this idea that we don't need an else in the case where the if contains a return. Because if we get down to line 68, it means the if did not execute. So we're sort of in the else anyway. So we'll try this out. And I guess we have to enter some input that contains uh, new lines and other things. So hello world. We'll try this just first. OK, D is not a white space character. L is not a white space character. We'll scroll up. Um, there's my character space, uh, which is also not a white space character. Maybe I made a mistake. Um, actually, maybe I forgot to recompile my code. I was thinking to myself, do I have to edit the video? Uh, okay, so we'll try that again. 
You see, there's been a couple of mistakes today. It's the end of a long day. Uh, okay, so we've got, uh, if we find uh, the end of our output here, D is a letter, is not white space. And then up here, our space, not a letter, is a white space character. Always recompile your code, folks. If you don't do that, the code is not gonna work. Uh, and then we scroll up, and we notice all of these other letters are also not white space. We have one more thing to try. I'm gonna type hello, and then I'm gonna press enter. And we know that when we press enter, all of the current line gets fed in. Here's my character. This is my new line character. It is a white space character. So my test up here did succeed. And then H, E, L, L, and O are all not white space. And I guess I have to write, okay, world space, some garbage, and then we're done. Okay, so we've got these letters are lowercase. They are letters. They're not uppercase, and they're not white space. Here I've got, um, let's see, my space character, not a letter, is white space. And then uh, here's the beginning of the line I just entered, not white space, is a letter, is uppercase. So uh, of course I could write all these functions myself, but the fact that the language gives them to me means that I shouldn't because I should use what it provides. It's also true that is space isn't as complete as the one the language provides. And I don't wanna have to rewrite this function every single time I write a program. So having them available in the language helps me uh, to that extent as well. But we need to keep in mind in this course that to the extent that we can, we should always see if we can understand the logic behind the library functions because we don't want to have to believe in magic. Um, it's true that functions like printf and getchar are pretty weird and it turns out they're all written in C so we could maybe learn how to do it but they're complicated so we can't necessarily write those from scratch ourselves but other parts of the library it's really useful if we do try and get inside their head and learn how we would write them if we were the ones writing those functions uh, by hand.